Hey guys, it's Michael Todd and welcome to the Cult of Vintage. Do you like antiques? Do you like vintage? Then you're in the right place. If you're not already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And don't forget you guys, leave me a thumbs up, drop me a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite find of the day is. I'd really appreciate it. Let's get to shopping. Okay, so today we are back at the one, the only Firehouse Marketplace in Sealands Grove, Pennsylvania. I found some probably of my most profitable items here. Um, now I just said that out loud and put it into the universe and we're going to find absolutely nothing today. So let's get inside, see if we can't find anything. I hope I didn't just jinx myself. All right, so again, we are outside. This is kind of like the garage area, if you will. A little bit more of a uh, flea market vibe to it. I am seeing this amazing waterfall. Oh, with matching headboard. Look at the hardware. So it does look like we have the original Bakelite. Look at these. Isn't that amazing? And we are dovetailed. Great little deco -y lines here. I love it. Right above it, we've got a nice, this looks like it's actually ceramic, not milk glass. Oh no, it is milk glass. Bit of a basic banana boat. It is still pretty. I think that you could make it an absolutely beautiful dried floral arrangement in there. I think a lot of people think, you know, they see a banana boat and what am I going to do with it? But imagine this during Christmas with a little like assemblage, some ornaments stuck in there. Great piece. All right, let's see what else we can find. And then we have the matching vanity. What is this? Oh my God, $40 again original hardware you know it's definitely got some character to it so far as like some dings the loss of the veneer this one's a little loose but still overall really good condition who are you little t i think you're like a japan piece no you're limuge Eight dollars, not bad. We do have a hairline right here, though. All right, let's go inside, guys. That's so cool, though. All right, we're going inside. Hmm. Set of dishes. Twelve. <sighs> yeah. That's a lot. It's a lot. Let's go over here. Don't know. 50% uh, off. But I don't really see anything. A little raggedy Andy there. I think he's like an 80s. Alright. Nothing in here. Let's see if we can find something else. So we got a little piece of like a Victorian era milk glass here. We've got some of the white and lavender uh, pansies painted on there. What caught my attention was the little lion relief here with the filigree uh, work on it. It is unmarked. Um, we've got some, a lot, well, some. We've got quite a bit of roughness up here at the top, but you'll notice that the stopper um, does have that lion relief. I'm not really digging that. Now that is in the glass. Unfortunately, the condition is gonna kind of hold me back and it's more so this edge right here. However, it is only $4. Yeah. So not bad as a collector piece, but, um, yeah, we're gonna leave that one behind. Darn it. Okay, this is really interesting. I think this is Royal Copley with those three lines underneath. Now, it does have room for a candle, and it is, in fact, a planter. Um, really good condition. No chips or cracks that I can see. Of course, there is some crazing. Now, it is priced at... Oh, they have it marked as Royal Copley. So, they do have it at 15 Um... 
Hmm, let me see here. Yeah, that, that's about the going rate for that. So we're going to set her behind, but that's still a really pretty piece. Who would have thunk it? Now I do see over here. Yeah, let me set this guy down. We'll check that out. That is a piece of clear glass. Ellie Smith, Moon and Stars. It obviously is um, a compo, a covered compo. $15. Oh my gosh, this is the huge one. Let's check around the perimeter here. Um, this is usually where you're going to find the damage from it being, you know, um, open and closed. So, it looks really, we got a little flea bite right there. Um, okay, let's do that. Or not, I don't know, upon closer inspection, right here in the middle there, I don't know if I'm picking it up that well on camera, there is a... Shoot, there's a crack in the glass. Darn it. That's the huge that's the huge one too. Oh well. Darn it. Alrighty guys, here we've got a little like it appears to be like a depression era, a little handled basket. Um now I know the subject matter of it being a basket isn't necessarily the most popular. Um, but at $28, I don't think so, but it's got an amazing pattern to it. I really like that, but 28 isn't where we would need it to be, so we're going to leave that one behind, but it's still something really cool to see on camera. Sorry, we've got people like on speakerphone screaming, so. <laughs> All right, do you see it down there? I see it. It is a piece of Weller. Um, this one is Dickens Ware. Interesting. Excellent condition. Hmm. It's at 190. I wonder if I ask if they can do a little bit better. Let's see. Look at that. It's stunning. I'm going to see if we can't do better on it. Let's see. Okay, guys, here we've got a beautiful little three piece. It is a sugar, a creamer, and we do have a little nappy dish down here. I think it's absolutely beautiful. It obviously is hand painted. Um, Sadly, there does appear to be a small condition issue on the creamer. It is right down here, that chip. Um, otherwise, it's the paint is in excellent condition. Uh, it's The sugar and creamer are 12 The nappy is 8 So it would be $20 for everything. I'm just like, is that chip such a deal breaker i mean uh, uh, i'm gonna think about that one i don't think i'm gonna do it but i am gonna think about it but just with that condition issue i'm really trying um to try to get stuff unbroken anymore not that i might oh here's an interesting little one look at that one some more clear glass lovely little ripple effect only seven dollars Hmm. I like that optic effect to it. That's interesting. Look at that. We've got some more clear swung. I like the rippling. Um, there's a little too many air bubbles in that one. Yeah, I, I, I'm not. The air bubbles, no. We're going to leave that one behind. This one is okay over here next to it um hmm i love that bottom on it it's only three dollars i think she's really pretty and i'm loving that bottom could be northwood could be jefferson let's get this one too okay guys here i found some uh, ephemera. I'm digging these. These are, uh, I love these, these haze lithographs, these small books. I definitely love them. And I got some postcards here. Now I pulled these out because uh, they're kind of like more nondescript. This one does have the poetry on it. I don't know what is going on with this one. It's really weird. So I definitely want to pick it up also. But the other ones I'm loving because of the florals. Um, let's see. Yes, these. This one's post-1911, so I definitely want to pick this one up, too. I think it's really cool and unusual. Good score. 
And then, you guys, I did find this absolutely adorable little advertisement piece here, or perhaps it is a page out of a nursery book. But I definitely want to get this, especially for only a dollar. It's great graphics. Yeah, let's get it. Alrighty, guys. So here is what we got. Um, you know what? I know that we did not get the most. And of course, we have those two clear swung glass faces back there. And I know I didn't get a lot of footage for the video. So what I'm going to try to do is hit up a flea market that I've never been to before. I've never attempted to film at a flea market. So I'm going to see how that goes. Um, maybe we can get a couple more uh, minutes of footage out of there. Maybe find some good stuff. Maybe we'll find absolutely nothing. I don't know. Let's go check it out. Here we go. Okay, so we're here. There's not a lot of vendors, I gotta be honest, and it looks like some people are packing up. It's not even 12 o'clock yet, so I don't really know what's going on, but we'll see, you know, whoa. Let's get up close and personal. All right, here we go, let's check it out. I mean, here we are on the inside again. It looks like a lot of people are either closed or chose not to be here. I don't know. And I don't want to look too hard because, of course, that's where we're going to find the stuff at. Um, let's go over here. This one appears to be open. Mm -hmm. Don't really see anything. Oh, there's some Wade Whimsies, 75 each, or three for two five for three. I don't really see any. No. Hmm. All right. Over there looks interesting, but there's no one there. <laughs> All right. Well, this ain't it. So I'm going to have to think about that. Hmm. Okay. So we are back four days later. I think that we did pretty darn good um, at Firehouse Marketplace, but frankly, I didn't get enough footage. I don't like giving you guys a lot of like backfiller footage. I like it to be very impactful. We were there recently, so a lot of the stuff, it would be very redundant footage. That said, we are a couple of days later, as you heard, and we are going to go thrift shopping. Um, we're going to check out Goodwill here, see if we can find anything. Um, it's going to be an adventure and you guys are along for the ride. Let's do it. To the Goodwill. We're probably going to switch over to full voiceover at this point, guys. So, yes, we're definitely going to have to switch to complete voiceover. The music was bumping. Now, I am checking out, of course, the linens here. That first one was a newer. It was a manufactured piece. This one here, uh, while handmade, the moss color, very indicative of like 60s and 70s, um, didn't really speak to me. Uh, I'm really trying to concentrate on more intricate uh, knitting or crocheting, pardon me, um, patterns and more vibrant colors. So... We're going to check out the framed art here. Nothing really amazing. And now we're going to go over into our hard goods here. This piece was really interesting. It kind of fooled me when I was looking down at it. It seemed a little bit more uh, like late 1800s, early 1900s. But then when I picked it up, looked at it, it was some transfer wear. Um, probably more like 70s through the 80s. Of course, you can get some apple juice here and egg noodles because why not? Alrighty, guys, we're going to move on. Now, this piece is super fun. Uh, these hobbyist pieces, the little kit here, the safety pin art was very popular. Somebody did shove some, obviously, some Christmas lights up in there, $2.99. I decided to go ahead and pick him up. I love, again, these pieces. I think they're, they're super fun. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get safety pin Frosty there. Now, we're obviously headed down the silver aisle, if you will. Obviously, it's going to be filled with a lot of like cooking utensils, baking pans, pots, pans, etc. Um, but hey, you never know. I always go down every aisle just in case. We've obviously moved on now to kind of like the white aisle. We're going to be checking stuff out here. It seems to be kind of like standard fare um, in regards to Goodwill. This is a much smaller Goodwill than probably a lot of Goodwills that maybe people are used to. 
Now on the opposite side here, I did see these little canister jars. I think that they're super cute. They're giving me, again, very like 80s vibes to it. And then I see this mark, it's like MR. Couldn't figure it out and it's Napco. Um, I know a lot of pieces actually do have that mark on, but those ones do turn out to be Napco. I headed down the brown aisle. Now I thought it was really interesting. Typically the holiday is is sectioned out there. Um, however, they decided to go ahead and mix in the Halloween, and I'm not mad at it, truth be told. I think that it, aesthetically, the color palette does make sense. This is really interesting, kind of like a family crest here. Um, it's definitely vintage, um, and it is Burwood, which is kind of like the original uh, founder of like that plastic composite made to almost look wood, but a little too specific, so I'm going to leave it behind. Here we've got this absolutely adorable little elephant. It is a made in Italy piece, which I thought was really interesting. I wasn't able to find the, the exact uh, manufacturer on it. And at $2.99, I was like, you know what? I think I am going to go ahead and get it until I saw, yep, his trunk, in fact, is repaired. So back on the shelf you go. Here is our red aisle, our Isle of Passion. Um, it wasn't really seeing anything until I saw this one. It is a little Westmoreland satin glass candy jar here. It's only $3.99. There's no chips or cracks on it. I love picking up the pink glass. I know that it's very popular right now, so we're going to go ahead and get this one. Um, I do find a lot of Westmoreland, it being a Pennsylvania company, and yeah, you can also find hair extensions here too, folks. Now this piece, oh my gosh, isn't it adorable? This little tin can here made to look like a car, a little tomato, or is it apples? An apple truck. I, of course, had to get this. It is dinged up. It's got signs of age and wear on it, but I really do think that it adds to its aesthetic value. So I was really pleased to get this piece. I think it's super cute. All right, we are going down now the, <laughs> like you can't say, the, the blue and the green aisle here. Um, again, a lot of very standard fair items, and I did see these little stemless wine glasses. I thought perhaps they could have been redone. No, they're not. They're just some run-of-the-mill, I don't know, like Target, Walmart kind of deal. We have a little uh, tile here, and fortunately it's, quite broken. It is vintage though. So, I mean, that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, again, it was glued back together. So back on the shelf, you go womp womp. <laughs> now I will say, even though it is a, a small goodwill, I have a tendency to go back through the aisles just in case, because while it is small, they definitely do have quite a few things on the eye uh, in the aisles. So your eye can kind of be deceived. Um, the green aisle is actually a really good example of it. Um, I walked down this and I, there wasn't anything that I really found um, except for this piece here. Again, it's kind of like a very Majolica style jardinier, but obviously $5 at Big Lot. So made to give you the antique aesthetic but at a cheaper price now i actually this is the second time down through and i do find this anna lee santa um he's in really good condition there is a piece of felt that's missing on the bottom he would have been lined now there is an anna lee paper hand tag and what i'm doing now is looking for the actual sewn on tag because boom there it is, 1967. He is $10, so I ran some quick comps and I found out he's actually going for about 40 to 50. So I'm definitely gonna pick him up. I love the Anna Lee with those very cute, sweet, happy faces. Now I've moved on into the children's aisle and I'm checking out the books. This is obviously, um, at one time, it would have been a school library copy. It is a Baba Yaga. Um, and again, we're seeing here that it, it, she's a traditional figure in Russian folklore um, and appears apparently in many Russian children's stories. It is a vintage book. I love the graphics in this. Oh, my goodness. It's, it's a bit dark, kind of spooky. Um, so I definitely pick this up. I think it's amazing. Again, this is really about the artwork. Uh, and I think that it speaks to a lot of nostalgia to a lot of us. So I 100% I pick that up. Now, this children's book is more of a contemporary one. However, that cover really caught my eye. There is no resale value in it, but look at the illustrations in this book. This is 
Princess Somnia. Um, she doesn't look like she has a hard time sleeping. Look at this one here plainer dress as a cello. Again, this is about the artwork. I oh, I think it's absolutely beautiful. Um, Princess Babbling Brook. I love it. It's very charming. It's very whimsical. Again, there's not a lot of resale value on it, but I fell in love with the artwork. So you do decide to go ahead and pick this one up. Um, something you may not know is that I actually do have a number of children's books because again, the artwork really speaks to me. I'm in a sense of whimsy. Look at her from the cover there. All right, you guys, now we've picked up this little like 70s, 80s ginger jar. Obviously, it's Sadler. It is English, which kind of surprised me. Um, at $1.99, I do decide to go ahead and pick this piece up. I think that it would fit in a modern aesthetic. Um, you know, the Grand Millennial or Granny Chic. Those designs are really popular right now, so I do want to pick it up. Now, this is cool. I did not get this, but it's kind of, it is reminiscent of um, Tollware, and I really like this, um, the strawberries on it. I think this would be really cool in a fireplace during the summer months. Obviously, most of us don't live in a climate where summer months are indicative of having a fire. I wanted to see how it was $3.99, but I really like that. I think that's super cute, and for 4 bucks, yeah. Now, this one we definitely picked up at $5. This is the Royal Dalton Bunnykins line. Um, no, this isn't from 1936, but <laughs> it's in overall really good condition. It definitely was used, so we are seeing some utensil marks on there. I don't think it's horrible, and at $5 for a bowl and plate, we definitely picked this up. These guys we did have to leave behind. I've seen these here before. Um, very strong mid-century vibes to them. Love the sculptural detail on them. Unfortunately, there is some exceptionally deep crazing on these, so I do leave those behind. That's just a matter of time um, before those that crazing becomes hairlines, and then it, it would probably be structural. Then I find this little, I thought this was a Hitchcock, uh, Hitchcock uh, men's cuffling box. Turns out, no, it's actually a low, low company toys. It is a traveling chess set. Um, there, The handle is broken, but look how tiny the little pieces are. I think that's super cute. And at $1.99, really good price. But again, we've got some damage here on the front. It is missing its little instruction sheet. Um, had the damage not been there, I could have lived without the instructions, but we're going to leave that behind. All right, you guys, we are now at the end of the video. We're going to wrap it up outside. Here we go. Okay, now I feel better about today's video. Um, hey, you know what? I think we got some good stuff in Goodwill. Did we get the most amazing things? No, but I will say that that uh, safety pin snowman, he's right up there. I think he's pretty awesome. I mean, hey, nothing's going to beat that Luelsa Dickens wear, though. That was a fantastic piece. It is absolutely stunning. Um, I'm very pleased that, you know, we did find that. Not that I would ever rule out the possibility of finding Antique Weller in a Goodwill. Hey, you never know, and I'm sure it's been done. Fortunately, we didn't do that today. There's always the next time. Now, before we wrap it up, you guys, remember, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Don't forget to leave a comment letting me know what your favorite find in the video was today. And uh, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. And wrapping it up, guys, until next time, remember, keep it rusty, crusty, and dusty. Bye, guys.